Okay, Chief Architect people, um, making a, a video here. I, I made an original video. I lost audio, so I'm going to do this again. Uh, I think the first video was pretty good, so I'll try to reach those standards. Um, this is going over, not only are we going to go over some advanced methods in the, in the toolbar configurations, but we're also going to illustrate a couple of tricks to maybe restore your toolbars and even make some custom icons for your toolbars. And so what we're looking at right here probably looks a little bit overbearing on the right side of the screen. Um, and that's because this is illustrating the method I'm going to use to create some uniformity across multiple toolbar configurations. And just so we are all clear, um, let's go over some of the naming conventions that are used in Chief Architect. Now, um, these are my configurations. Configurations are the, um, we'll look at our toolbar tab. This is the configuration of the individual toolbars, this being an individual toolbar, this guy right here, one that I created myself. That's an individual toolbar and it's, it's settings as far as whether or not it, it is an active toolbar in the plan view, elevation view, 3D view, material, etc. And so these are toolbars. The, the collection of these active toolbars are a toolbar configuration set. And one of the limitations of Chief Architect is that you cannot um, have a global toolbar that can be applied to multiple toolbar configurations, which means that the only way you can create a configuration is either copy or import. Now, there is no new, which means that if I copy my default configuration and name it something like the second configuration and then I make a custom toolbar such as this I can't then go back to my default configuration and somehow activate this custom toolbar it will not exist and because of that we're, we're kind of severely limited in creating a uniform system and I'll show you what I mean when I switch to my kitchen and bath you're gonna notice a couple things uh, the top row and the first three columns to the right here. Now those first three columns in the top row are in my toolbar sets here and they are labeled always on, always on CAD tools, behaviors, cameras, etc. That's because when I switch to something other than this kitchen and bath, say I switch to MEP, you're gonna notice the first three columns, the top row, are not going to change. That's because I want those toolbars there. I want them to be in every toolbar configuration. So the only way that I know to achieve that is you create every individual toolbar that you're going to think that, that you think you're going to need in your various configurations, which takes a little bit of pre-planning. So it gets kind of complicated. Now the next thing we're going to take a look at is I'm going to get to my edit tab we're going to go down to preferences and underneath the general tab and under folders if I click the show button under all program paths I'm going to be able to find my toolbar folder and I can I'm on Windows Explorer so I can say show in Explorer and what this shows me obviously the location of those toolbars now something that you're going to notice let's go ahead and change the thumbnail view of this Oh, and when you do that, by the way, um, the way that Chief navigates the Windows Explorer, it kind of screws Explorer up, believe it or not. And you, as you can see, there's a little bit of hiccuping there. Um, sometimes the drag and drop gets screwed up that way. So if you know where your toolbars are, you can certainly just navigate it to, to it through Windows Explorer or your finder in a Mac. Um, so I went ahead and expanded all of the files in here so that we get a preview. And one of the things that you're going to notice is I've got an annotations toolbar and I've got an annotations PNG file, which is an image file. And it's named the same as the toolbar because what Chief does is it's going to look in this toolbars folder. And if it finds a PNG file with the same name as a toolbar file, toolbar file, um, it will apply this PNG as an icon. So if we went back to Chief Architect, you're gonna see there's my annotations configuration set. Not only that, but if I go into configuring my
toolbars and I navigate to um, various tools. Look at that, underneath tools, which are all the available radio buttons that I have to apply to toolbars, there's my annotations configuration set. So I can apply a custom made configuration set with a custom made icon. Another thing to note in the toolbars, toolbar, boy, I'm having trouble saying that. Another thing to note in the toolbars folder is that you see that under my annotations toolbar is this .bak. So in fact, this is not a .toolbar, toolbar, <laughs> we're going to call that TB from now on. Uh, in fact, it's not a TB file, it's a BAK. And what this is, is it's a backup of my active TB file. So if I delete the .bak, I now have, um, I, I've now restored my custom TB. So, uh, <laughs> this is just screwing the flow of my video. I should learn how to say toolbar, geez. Um, so let, let me just say that one more time uh, in case anyone missed it. In your toolbar folders, you've got, not only do you have your custom toolbars, which are named as you named them when you copied them, annotations that toolbar, but you also have a BAK file named the same way. So that if your toolbar file gets corrupt, you can delete the .bak on this and it will replace that file. And there you go, you've reinstated your, your toolbar. So um, what I would do when I'm doing this global set and I want to create new sets is, in fact I'll just do it right now, I'm going to make kitchen and bath, MEP, space planning, terrain, walls, windows, and doors, annotations. So now look what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and just back these up real quick. Let's take this. In fact, I've got a couple of these. Here we go. List view in backups. I've already done this once because I already did this video. I'm going to delete all these and I'm going to go back to here and I'm going to take all these and throw them into backups. Now, that didn't crash Chief. Chief is still working. It's not um, looking for those files just yet. Another thing to note, library items.tbdata. Um, library items.tbdata, you can go into tools and you can type in place library and this will allow you to place a library object in your toolbars. So that if I close customization and click on that, it's going to let me navigate to a library item and place a custom item from my library. That's a pretty cool trick. Um, and I'll tell you why that's uh, particularly important uh, in a minute here. I'm going to go ahead and go back and delete this guy by just dragging him off the screen. So I've now gotten rid of all of these they're in a backup folder, so they don't actually exist. And so what I can do now is remove, 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 remove all these guys. And then I can copy this and call it MEP. And so what happens is I've got this MEP. It looks exactly like what we're looking at now. But um, now that it's an MEP, I don't want to actually see the rest of these toolbar toolbars on the right side. And so I've effecti effectively created three columns and one row of a global toolbar set with a specified set in MEP. Oh, looks like windows and doors are still enabled. There we go. So now my MEP is done. Same process. I can, I can just copy MEP. It'll do a little let, less uh, uh, clicking, but I can call this kitchen and bath. And the neat part about this, you know, we've got a backup in case we screwed it up. In fact, we've got two backups in case we screwed it up. Uh, but the other thing is that the next time I load Chief, it will retain the icon I used for that kitchen and bath. You notice this is a new configuration set, but all my custom icons are still intact. Um, and so now we're on the kitchen bath. I can obviously uncheck all the electrical and go in and check all the bathroom and kitchen, etc. Now I'm going to end up keeping doing that for the rest of the sets that I need to do. But um, in the meantime, I just wanted to show, like, if I pull a orthographic or 
uh, perspective overview. This is a custom set that I've built only for the 3D parameters, and I named these toolbars 3D dash, etc., etc. Um, and something that's kind of interesting about this is these are all library uh, objects that I placed, just like I had just shown about a minute or two ago. And kind of the power of these are that I can use the blend with material, blend colors with materials tool, and say I've got a gray stucco wall and I quickly want to um, create a, I don't know, beige or tan stucco wall. I can just come over here, click on this color tan, and there you go. I, you know, immediately can change the finishes um, and blend with materials, or I've got countertops, flooring, uh, metals over here any number of things and so if you're designing in front of a client it's really powerful to have a custom set of 3d uh, material tools to change the look and finishes uh, you know effectively and efficiently right in front of a client and they're always very impressed that you know you're, you're illustrating that you really know your program and you're worth your dollar so I'm gonna continue on and fixing my toolbars that I just screwed up um, but I hope that this, uh, you know, feel free to ask questions. I know this is going over some some kind of technical and advanced things, and, and maybe you guys have some other methods, but this is the method I came up with to have a, a uniform set that I'm that I'm happy with. And, uh, and just to note, this all came about because I had a touchscreen system, and so all these toolbars were on the left-hand side because it was easy to touch those icons with the press of the thumb for the hand that you're holding your touchscreen interface. Um, so hope you enjoy, and, and go ahead and leave comments and questions or shoot me a direct message.